Thank you. Chairman Chairman. One thing these hearings and so many we've had in our subcommittee have illustrated is the need for the United States to think seriously about civil defense. We were all under our tables, try, you know, desks, and well, some of you are too young, but some of you are old enough to remember being under your desk when the risk was uh, in an onslaught of thousands of Soviet nuclear weapons of enormous yield when it wouldn't have done us too much good and there wouldn't have been any medical care for us the day or week after. Now we face the possibility of a small weapon hitting one of our cities and we're, when we could have civil defense, we don't want to talk about it because that would mean we'd have to be uh, realistic about the threat we face. We may even be, want to be looking at how we design our cities and how um, that makes a city more or less vulnerable to a low-yield nuclear weapon. The um, uh, We've talked about um, Khan's per, uh, superstar status or alleged superstar status among Pakistan, uh, the people of Pakistan and of course Musharraf every time he doesn't want to do anything that he doesn't want to do says oh my god you can't make me do that the Islamics will, uh, the Islamists will take over the government and they'll have the nuclear weapons would Musharraf face significant on the street reaction if he turned over to us quietly information about the non-Pakistani actors in the AQ Khan network Chris, I think you addressed that to some degree in your testimony. You're talking about if you were to, to turn that over to the Pakistanis, yeah. who would turn that over to the no, U.S.? If, yeah, well, no, I mean, if obviously that which Khan knows is available to Musharraf. His continued free existence is available. Mm. Musharraf's protecting him. The, all of the records, all these payments were made uh, through Pakistani banks, mostly with Pakistani government funds. Uh, Pakistan knows the very things we want to know. The question is, what reaction would there be on the street if all that, all the information was turned over to us with the understanding that the Pakistanis involved in this nefarious scheme were beyond uh, our um, access, uh, but that uh, this would allow us to go after uh, those in Dubai, Europe, and the United States that have played a role in this program? Yeah, I, I don't see that being an issue. I mean, I think the issue has been giving, you know, direct access to the U.S. to I, I trust Pakistani interrogators more than our own. Um, I'm not sure that a visit from a kindly gentleman from the U.S. Embassy uh, is the be-all and end-all, although it has become the holy grail in this dispute. Uh, the real question is, I mean, I mean A.Q. Khan could just sit there and say, uh, yes, I come to my house. Uh, you can talk to me for four hours uh, for four days in a row. And uh, he may reveal absolutely nothing. There's nothing the U.S. Embassy official can do to him. Uh, maybe uh, insult the quality of the tea he has served, and that's about it. Um, in contrast, Musharraf has not only Khan, but all the documents. So the question is, why isn't Musharraf sharing with us all the information we could use to go after all the non-Pakistani actors in this network? Uh, I don't know why he wouldn't be. I think we should. I, uh, Mr. Fitzpatrick. Yeah. Um, sir, I think um, the reason for that is that Pakistan still relies uh, on many of these non-Pakistani uh, suppliers uh, for its own nuclear weapons program. So. Uh, for it, what it considers its national security, but would it make sense for us to um, make some concessions to the Pakistani nuclear program in return for getting all the files we need? And it's not just what's in Khan's head. I mean, it's, it's the paperwork, it's the emails, it's the orders, it's the financial records, it's the shipment, shipping documents. Uh, Pakistan's already a nuclear power. We're not going to do anything about that. They have five or ten more nuclear weapons next year than this year. It's not going to shake South Asia, let alone the world. Why can't we reach an accommodation with Pakistan where, uh, in return for, say, their, uh, everything we do, including those uh, raw F-16s, uh, and perhaps uh, less intense pressure from the United States not to expand the nuclear arsenal, um, we get the information we need to shut down this network? Uh, Mr. Albright. 
Yeah, I think it can be done. I mean, the IA made a deal with the Pakistanis to get information that they needed on the centrifuge programs and assistance to Iran, perhaps even Libya. The problem is that it's a slow process, and the IA carries no political weight. And I think if the U.S. got behind this and you targeted it, I think it could be very effective, and it should be done. And I think the example of the IA shows no damage was done to Musharraf by sharing centrifuge information with an outside entity. I think the real answer here is the reason we're not getting the information is we're not putting any pressure. Our policy is to give Musharraf everything he wants all the time without getting anything in return. Can I add one thing? Yeah. In the prosecutions, the top people aren't talking. I mean, I can name them, Laird, Griffin, Visser in South Africa. They're not talking at all. People below that are talking, and these three may end up being prosecuted successfully. But it's incredibly important to get information out of Pakistan because they know it all. And the top guys who we hoped would talk have not talked. And so getting the information from Pakistan may be the only way we get the answers. We need the information from Pakistan, and the idea that it's all in a person's head belies the fact that with today's commerce and electronics, if you have the documents and the e-mails, that's more valuable than an interview, particularly with a reluctant witness. Let's turn to Dubai. Would the gentleman yield? Yes. A fascinating line of questioning, Mr. Chairman. If I could venture a different answer, perhaps Musharraf isn't protecting A.Q. Khan. Perhaps A.Q. Khan is protecting Musharraf. If the answer to my question previously about the C-130s, I have subsequently found out, because of good staff work, that nobody else produces them but us. So they came from us. And Musharraf was, for a good part of that term, the head of the Army, while that equipment and material was being transferred to North Korea. And perhaps that's why, just perhaps, he's not pressing that. I think it's obvious that it's the Pakistani government, not some guy in a basement, that's responsible for the A.Q. Khan program. It is the Pakistani government program. And we already know about the past sins, and we know which government is responsible for them. The real question is, will that government that claims to be an ally of ours now continue to get everything they want from us without sharing information that is not all that detrimental to them? But shifting to the UAE, we know that when much of this went on, the UAE was an open door and a great financial and shipping center. Now they know what went on. Are they cooperating with us, and have they bothered to pass laws against proliferation? They've passed export control laws. I think they're cooperating, but from what I understand, it's not that easy. And there isn't a lot of leverage. I mean, if the person didn't break any laws, how do you get them to talk? And so I think it's not been as fulfilling, or there's not been as much information as I would have thought. Is there anything in the U.A. Constitution that prevents the U.S. from asking the Pakistanis to do that? Not that I'm aware of. Thank you. Thank you.